I just want to return to this thing about comparing your insides to somebody else's outsides, which is one of these aphorisms that you find in AA and other kind of 12-step programs. Uh, and I just want to just develop something I was talking about in my last video, which is to do with, you know, what it means. Because when you, let me just see if I can, what I want to do is just strip that of the psychological um, aspects of it. Because I think when you talk about yourself, it's got all these layers of psychology attached to it, to do with self-esteem, to do with um, self-image, to do with appearance, you know, whole, to do, you know, do with kind of role, roles and, yeah, those kind of things. So I'm trying to strip that away for a bit and just stay with the physical and, and, the, and the kind of sensory and the sensory motor and see how that plays out. Because when that, um, when you say that aphorism, don't compare someone's outsides with your own insides, you're really saying don't compare how someone looks with how you feel. Don't compare a visual appearance with a, with a kind of somatic, uh, proprioceptive, emotional, you know, that kind of sense. And that makes perfect sense. You shouldn't compare an appearance with a, with a feeling. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, at least on the surface, it's a different... Uh, a different kind of sensory modality entirely, so you would expect it to be different. Uh, but I wonder how, how different it is, whether there is a, a point of contact between those things, between someone's outsides and your insides, on a purely physical sense. Uh, I mean, certainly part of uh, my phenomenal experience of being has got this uh, felt sense. I do have a, a, a kind of kinesthetic sense and a some other sensory thing going on inside my body, derived from the kind of biochemistry and all this kind of stuff. But I've also got all this other kind of sensory stuff going on. Uh, you know, I can hear things, I can see things. I've got a taste in my mouth right now, even though it's pretty subtle. Uh, I can feel the cold on my nose and my ears, and they're probably glowing bright red right now. Uh, there's all this kind of feeling stuff, not in an emotional sense, but in a purely somatosensory understanding. All that stuff's going on. Uh, I can feel my balance in my body. Uh, what else can I feel? Uh, I haven't got any pains right now, but if I did have any, I would feel those. And if I had any particular sources of pleasure, I'd be feeling those right now. It's all a bit neutral in those regards right now. Um, so all those, those kind of sensory engagements are happening for me. But when I look out at somebody else, I don't see any of that stuff. I don't have access to any of that stuff. I can't access what they're seeing. I can't access what they're hearing. I can't access the feel of the cold on their skin. None of that stuff's available to me. The only part of their self that I can access is their visual appearance. You know, the, the limits of the skin, you know, it's like this envelope of skin I can see, really. And I can see their movements. I might be able to hear them as well, but I think it would get confusing if I went there. So primarily I can see them. So I'm just wondering, is there a part of this felt sense of being which does correspond to that? Is there a sense in which I can compare my insides, or I am comparing my insides to someone else's outsides? And I think the nearest candidate for that would be a, a kind of body schema. I know Sean Gallagher writes quite a bit about body schema. And it's got some history in, in kind of neuroscience, I think. But it's this idea that uh, inside our brain we have a map, or possibly a number of maps, of our body, schematic understandings of our body. So, for example, we know where our body is at all times. We know the relationships between different parts of our bodies at all times. We can kind of feel the limits of our body at all times. Um, you know, when I'm walking through a doorway, I know how far away to walk so I don't crash my shoulder into the edge of the door. Um, you know, normally when I lean on something, I know where my elbow is without looking. I can just put my elbow down on something. So I've got this very strong uh, schematic map of the contours of my body. And they are quite well-bounded contours, I have to say. And I've also got a kind of related map, I assume, about the movement potentials of those, that kind of contoured shape. So I pretty much know where it can go and where it can st stop and what it's capable of, more or less. 
Uh, and I think that schematic understanding does correspond very closely to the visual image of somebody else, I suspect. I don't know for sure. But I think in terms of, you know, aside from you know, other, other information I might be getting from the visual to do with facial expressions or to do with or any, any kind of body language stuff that's going on. Uh, do, uh, divorced from that, I think there is a, a correlation between the outsides of that person's body and my internal schematic representation of my own body. In fact, I think there kind of must be, really. Because I know there's, um, this is that mirror, mirror neuron stuff I've, I've been reading about. The, uh, there is a sense in which very newborn children, newborn babies, quite newborn, a few hours old anyway, can, uh, oh, it's a great big skein of ducks going over here. Uh, the newborn babies can mirror uh, the actions of their parents so that if you stick your tongue out to the baby, the baby will stick its tongue out back. Now, obviously, what's not going on there is uh, a recognition of a facial expression and then the duplication of that facial expression in a fully conscious way. I mean, this is long before what Lacan calls the mirror stage. So the baby hasn't got a self-image, so it's not that it can imagine its own face sticking its tongue out. It's mapping a visual uh, image, the image of a, of, a, of a mother putting its tongue out, onto its own somatosensory schematic map and duplicating the action. I think that makes sense. So it's making this kind of weird synesthetic transformation between a visual appearance and its own internal sense. So I think in that regard at least, there is a sense in which, for babies doing that, they are comparing their own insides to somebody else's outsides. And in, in, to, to that limited extent, I think, it's probably a fair mapping.